and welcome back to my film and TV channel. You're all staying safe and well. Um, yes, it's not often we do this, but we get, you know me, I'm big on football and we get a mixture of a film and, a, and football today. So I'm going to have a look at something that's been released on Netflix literally days before possibly the greatest ever uh, docu series is going to be released on football on Netflix. So uh, if you know, if you know Manchester City, you know what I'm talking about there, guys. But uh, this is a fictional. This is fictional football, not not to say this uh, expected docu uh, drama. Well, docu drama, documentary, football documentary, fly on the wall, whatever you call it, appears. We've got something as a little taster, yes. And uh, yeah, was it a good taster? Well, I'll tell you all about it. We're going to have something called the beautiful game today. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, everything. Film and TV, of course, reviews like this, information vlogs, reviews on documentaries. No doubt I'll do one on that greatest documentary I'm talking about uh, very, very soon. Um, <laughs> and, of course, hopefully you'll be watching it if you're a City fan. If you're not a City fan, why would you watch it? But, hey, if you like football and you generally don't have any hatred for City, why not? So I'm sure there'll be a, a lot of people watching it. Anyway, please push those buttons, that subscribe button, push the bell notification and check through the channel. As you say, you will find stuff on my team, Manchester City as well. So if you know anyone who's interested, give them a kick in my direction. And any likes are always very, very welcome, guys. This is classed as a British sports drama, well, British football drama, directed by Thea Sharrock and written by Frank Cottrell Boyce. I don't know what their, their skill or profession is in relation to football. I have no idea. Uh, the main two stars in this headliners are Bill Nye, I always like Bill Nye, and Michael Ward, who gets a lot of uh, cred out there. Released by Netflix on the 29th of March 2024. I'm doing this review on the 31st of March 2024. It's a long film, 125 minutes. Painfully long, really, at, at times. A 12 certificate. Also stars Valerie Galino, Christina Rodio, Shell Cole, uh, Tom Vaughan Lawler, Kit Young, Callum Scott Howells and a few others as well. What's it about? Well, it's about the squad of English homeless footballers, yeah, picked from one little area of London, uh, based on this fictional story. I don't know how the real thing is done, but uh, eh, I, might, I might have the time to go back and check on that. And it includes the talented but troubled striker, Vinny, who obviously was let go by West Ham United. It's amazing how West Ham United get into these films, isn't it? We've got a big, big, uh, certainly a, a sort of film following, a Hollywood sort of following, if you like, because of that. I suppose working class team in London. There's not many left, is there? And they're certainly one of the biggest. They're led by coach Mal to compete in Rome at the global annual football tournament, the Homeless World Cup. Yes, it does exist, although this story isn't based on actual events. It's uh, it's just a fictional, uh, based on what goes on. So that leads me to what I think about it. I do like football, as you probably know, uh, and I wanted to like this. And within 10 or 15 minutes, I was struggling, I must admit. And it's certainly not normal for me to not enjoy something football related. Uh, and then again, how could you compete with Jimmy Grimble? But hey, there you go. Uh, but Bill Nye as well. I mean, I love Bill Nye, but I did, apart from one or two good little bits, uh, it didn't play, I don't think, to Bill's skills. Uh, the humour worked very, very rarely. Uh, I found this disappointing. Um, there's a lot of hype over Michael Ward as well, but I think he needs more than this trope-ridden long film, which he generally just mopes around in, uh, to see his real potential. I'm sure he can do better. He just I just don't think the role was that great for any of them. Too many cliches, too little depth in writing where sort of relations, uh, relationships are just intimated. I mean, it could have made a nice little rom-com as well, this, but uh, just touched upon it. doesn't go into any great depth and it's mostly about choreographed football matches um, with lots of morals being thrown around uh, throughout, yeah, a, a, an overly long run time of over two hours, so... I think if it had engaged more, if it had been about an actual, actual homeless people, an actual someone who actually took part, um, I believe Scotland have done well in this competition. Uh, I've, I've had a look back through who won, like who won gold medals, etc. And certainly England didn't, uh, but Scotland have. So why not base it on a, an actual people, an actual event, perhaps where Scotland were involved? Uh, if you wanted a sort of British version of it, if you wanted. And uh, one of the, one of the things that did, uh, <coughs> excuse me, guys. 
Well, I think it did uh, surprise me. <laughs> uh, uh, would any European crowd, let alone Italians, cheer on any sort of England team? We don't care if the homeless or the, the, the full team, uh, no matter how sportsmanlike we've been. I've doubted it very, very much. So it's just cringy at times as well. It did make me cringe a little bit. It's a little bit. Nothing wrong with beating chess and being proud of being English, but, you know, it, it just. It made me cringe rather than proud, in fairness. Uh, some of the poignancy is nice, it's important, and yes, in theory, uh, it is a worthy project and should be covered, but uh, this fictional telling of it left me a little bit bored, in fairness. I just didn't enjoy it. And the best bits were actually seeing a short reel of actual homeless World Cups at the end, so it was only like a, a minute, a minute and a half or something like that. That was the best bit of the film for me, uh, apart from the odd Bill Nye moment. So I would be rotten on this on fresh tomato, uh, rotten tomatoes. I would be mixed though on, because at the end of the day, um, I've got to accept there's a message being told here, even if I didn't like the film as entertainment. So I would be mixed on Metacritic, but I'm just going to give it my minimum score. I can't give it any more. I'm going to give it a score. I'm, I'm tempted not to give it any score whatsoever, but I'll give it a five for Bill Nye and it's showcasing of a worthwhile event. Um, but that's all really. Uh, I wasn't particularly entertained by the film itself. Uh, but but I am in the minority. A lot of people like this. Uh, these are the scores from other areas of critique or public. Rotten Tomatoes, ninety one percent positivity, twenty twenty three. Uh, just 23 critics 6.7 out of 10 with 21 fresh and 2 rotten so they are positive there Metacritic a little slightly lower 61% from 9 critics 5 were positive and 4 were mixed and Rotten Tomatoes audience Joe Public yeah they liked it why not 74% 3.8 out of 5 and the other one well, always one we look at of course uh, Internet Movie Database almost 700 scores and reviews as I'm doing this and it's getting a 6.3 out of 10 so all well and good, a lot more, a lot higher than me. But I think most of these scores are for the idea and the theme rather than the execution of it, uh, in my mind, anyway. So, anyway, it's a shame. I did expect it would have been a little shorter as well. It might have been a little bit better, say, knock half an hour off it. But, uh, yeah, a bit disappointing for me. Let me know what you think, guys. Great to hear from you. To we meet again, only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. And <laughs> stay safe, Blues. And everyone who likes football, of course. <laughs> I've got into citizen mode because we're talking football. But stay safe, everybody who's watched this. Be great to hear your views. Thanks for watching. Till we meet again. Bye for now.